Hello, Chew. Just within the past few hours, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has apologised for wearing brown face makeup to a costume party in 2001. A picture of it has been published by Time magazine. The photo shows Mr. Trudeau at the party, which was themed Arabian Nights. He is wearing a turban and robes with his face, neck and hands completely darkened. According to Time magazine, Mr. Trudeau was a teacher at the private school. At a news conference, the Prime Minister was asked if he should resign. Uh, I take responsibility for my uh, decision to do that. I shouldn't have done it. I should have known better. Uh, it was something that uh, I didn't think was racist at the time, but now I recognize um, it was something racist to do, and I am deeply sorry. Our correspondent in Washington, David Willis, has more on the Prime Minister's apology. It was certainly a very highly contrite uh, Justin Trudeau who faced reporters uh, this evening, Mike. Um, he uh, called on Canadians to forgive him. He repeatedly apologised for his actions, said he shouldn't have done it, uh, should have known better, regretted what he did and so on. He said the photograph was unacceptable and um, he also said that he worked all his life uh, to fight against racism and intolerance and create opportunities for people. Uh, and uh, that he made this mistake when he was much younger and he wished he hadn't. Um, Mr. Trudeau said at one point that he'd been overly enthusiastic at one point in his life about um, wearing costumes, but um, uh, asked on multiple occasions uh, whether he should resign. He consistently dodged the question. He said it was something that he didn't think was racist at the time. Well, um, condemnation has been swift, as you can imagine. Canada's uh, left-wing New Democratic Party candidate, uh, Jagmeet Singh, had uh, this response to the photograph tonight. Well, it's troubling. I mean, it's really, it's insulting. Um, anytime we hear examples of brown face or black facing, it's really, it's, it's, it's making a mockery of someone for what they live and what their lived experiences are. Um, I think he needs to answer for it. I think he's got to answer the question why he did that. And it remains to be seen um, what uh, actually happens, what sort of uh, comeback there is to all this as far as Justin Trudeau is concerned, just one week into his uh, race for re-election. And of course it was 20 years ago, but it just seems so adrift from all the values he has very publicly advocated. Absolutely. I mean, this is a man who's been seen as uh, um, a hero for progressives, not just in Canada, but uh, in North America and elsewhere. This is somebody who, uh, in his time, had uh, promoted uh, the role of minority groups, uh, the plight of refugees. Canada has taken in more refugees than uh, its uh, American uh, neighbour. And, of course, his uh, Liberal Party has been a firm advocate of free trade. But um, he'd already been dealing with uh, criticism over a scandal involving uh, a long, uh, uh, allegations that he tried to influence his former justice minister's handling of a corruption case. So uh, it remains to be seen, I think, how this pans out amongst ordinary voters and uh, how much impact it has on his, uh, his race for re-election. In 2001, uh, when I was a teacher out in Vancouver, I attended an end-of-year gala where the theme was Arabian Nights. And I uh, dressed up in an Aladdin costume and put makeup on. I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better, but I didn't. And I'm really sorry. A hasty apology on the campaign plane tonight from Liberal leader Justin Trudeau after this photo surfaced of him wearing brown face makeup. It dates back 18 years to when he was a teacher at West Point Gray Academy in Vancouver. Good evening. The backlash has been swift tonight with the photo making waves across the country and right around the world. Dan Burrett joins us live now on this story. Dan, what more is Justin Trudeau saying tonight? Justin Trudeau is acting contrite. He looks embarrassed and he says he ought to have known better. The photo is getting attention from media around the world. Trudeau and the Liberals have been going after other candidates and other parties for inappropriate comments and photos in this election, but now it's his turn to respond. Asked if he would resign today, Trudeau says he's going to ask Canadians to forgive him. He admits this is not the first time he's dressed up like this. 
Just Mr. Trudeau, is that the only time in your life you've ever done something like that? Uh, when I was in high school, I uh, dressed up at a uh, talent show uh, and sang Dale in, with, 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 uh, with makeup on. Uh, Justin Trudeau on the campaign plane tonight. Dan, uh, what are other party leaders saying about this? Well, we spoke with Jugmeet Singh before Justin Trudeau issued his apology. Singh is not impressed. Well, it's troubling. I mean, it's really, it's insulting. Um, anytime we hear examples of brown face or black facing, it's really, it's, it's, it's making a mockery of someone for what they live and what their lived experiences are. Um, I think he needs to answer for it. I think he's got to answer the question why he did that. Now, Green Party leader Elizabeth May says in a tweet she is shocked by the racism shown in the photo and, a must, and he must apologize, quote, for the harm done and commit to learning and appreciating the requirement to model social justice leadership at all levels of government. In this matter, he has failed. We're still waiting to hear from Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. Meanwhile, the National Council of Muslim Canadians called this deeply saddening and they called on Trudeau to unequivocally apologize. A short time ago, they tweeted, we thank the Prime Minister for his apology. It came less than an hour after the Council called on him to apologize apologize for wearing brown face slash black face promises made promises kept that is the nccm way and we'll have much more on this story tonight at 11. anita mike and not only at 11 we'll actually have more on this story later in the show including reaction from people here in vancouver thank you dan you bet a growing scandal tonight involving canadian prime minister justin trudeau he is apologizing for wearing brown face at a school event while he was a teacher back in 2001. So let's discuss now. David Swerdlick is here, Tara Setmeyer. Good evening to uh, both of you. Good to see you. Hey, Don. Um, Tara, so uh, Trudeau came out, apologized very quickly after this picture surfaced. Let's watch and then we'll talk about it. In 2001, uh, when I was a teacher out in Vancouver, I attended an end of year gala where the theme was Arabian Nights and I uh, dressed up in an Aladdin costume and put makeup on. I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better, but I didn't. And I'm really sorry. I take responsibility for my uh, decision to do that. I shouldn't have done it. I should have known better. Uh, it was something that uh, I didn't think was racist at the time, but now I recognize um, it was something racist to do, and I am deeply sorry. Wow, the, a leader apologizing, it's just, it seems odd, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, because well, um, we have one who doesn't. But he says, you know, he says he didn't think it was racist at the time. Now he knows better. What do you think of that? I think that he answered that as best as anyone possibly could, mm -hmm. given the circumstances. Uh, Justin Trudeau is in a tough re-election battle right now in Canada. He, they've got a political scandal going on up there with him um, getting involved, allegedly, with trying to pressure his attorney general to back off an investigation of a major engineering firm. They just had a major intelligence scandal up there as well. They had an intelligence officer who uh, got caught with improper information, and they're part of our Five Eyes uh, intelligence apparatus, so the Canadians are important to us. So these are scandals that have been plaguing him, and he's right now behind in the polls. So this is, um, you know, he had no choice but to but to come out and apologize uh, for, for that. I mean, I have mixed feelings about how egregious this actually is, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, I don't know. I think context matters when it comes to these kinds of things. I think this is different than the Ralph, Ralph Northam situation in Virginia, where you had the KKK um, and outfit blackface and means someone something in blackface. Different in the United States than brown right, face absolutely. means in Canada. Yeah. Right, Right, and I just kind of feel like, yeah. you know, where do we draw the line with this? Is this something that should end his career? I, you know, no. But because of the things that I just listed and other domestic issues in Canada, um, it, it, this is going to hurt him uh, yeah. there. But his record right. has been good on civil rights there in Canada, from what I understand. David, I know you want to weigh in on this, but I just want to play this because he said it wasn't his first time doing something like this. Watch. When I was in high school, I uh, dressed up at a uh, talent show uh, and sang Dale in, with, 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 uh, with makeup on. So what do you think, David? 
So I, I agree with Tara, Don, that uh, context matters and that this is not just like the Governor Northam situation. There was right. no one in that picture next to him in a KKK hood. Exactly. That being said, I still think it is pretty egregious if for no other reason than, you know, this wasn't ancient history. This is 2001. He's the son of a politician, someone who likely had plans to be in public life. He was a teacher and yet didn't know that this was it, or didn't at the time recognize that this was an inappropriate thing to do. I do give him credit for coming out tonight in that clip you played and saying uh, that, you know, at the time I didn't think this was racist, but now I recognize that it is. I don't think there's really much more he can say other than sorry, right. which he also said. The one thing I will add, Don, about blackface here, since he, he you played the clip of him saying he did it again, singing the song Deo in blackface, um, the, one of the problems with blackface is that even if context matters, even if there's not the malicious intent, it's a situation where you run the risk, and I think he did, and Governor Northam did, and people who do it at Halloween and at frat parties do it, is that you reduce the ethnicity, the race, the religion that you're caricaturing to a one-dimensional or two-dimensional mm -hmm. state or caricature and dehumanize in that way. That doesn't mean that you can't dress up as someone who's your hero if they're another race. You just don't need the blackface. You don't need the makeup. It doesn't mean that, you know, Denzel Washington can't play Don Pedro in the movie Much Ado About Nothing, and it doesn't yeah. mean that uh, a white actor can't play a black, a historical black figure, white people have played Martin Luther King, it means that you have to be thoughtful about it and not reduce another culture to, to a character. Tara, I know you want to get in, but that's got to be the last word. I'm out of time. All but right. I do have to say this before we go. Think about it however you want to think about it. it, it when someone apologizes, wow. We, ne we, don't, we don't often see that here, especially a world leader who's saying, I should have known better and I'm sorry. You yeah, can feel about right it however thing. you want, but that, to me, that does mean a lot. I got to go. Thank you. We'll be right Thanks. back. Thanks, oh, Tom. Governor Gavin News. I want to bring you a Fox News alert right now. Now, leaders of the left, of course, delight in lecturing you about your moral inferiority and their superiority again and again. But also, as often, they are exposed as utter hypocrites. The latest example, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Chief Breaking News correspondent Trace Gallagher has more on this developing story. Hey, Trace. Hey, Tucker, he's speaking right now. We're going to tell you what he says in one moment. Let me set the story up for you. Off the top, we should note the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau admits the picture is him. It shows Trudeau wearing brown makeup on his face, neck, and hands during a party in 2001. At the time, the 29-year-old was teaching at a private school called West Point Gray Academy. The school was holding an Arabian Nights-themed gala, and Trudeau was dressed up as a character from Aladdin, complete with robes, headdress, and brown skin. The party the party was attended by faculty, administrators, and parents, and the photo was given to Time, formerly Time Magazine, by a Vancouver businessman who was part of the West Point Gray community, and the man said it's important the public see the picture. Others identified in the photo did not respond to Time's request for comments, but this is not a good start to the Prime Minister's re-election campaign because Trudeau is already involved in a scandal over whether he pressured his then Attorney General to drop corruption charges against a large and powerful Canadian engineering firm. It also may not sit well with voters considering Trudeau has called himself a champion of minority groups and Canada's many cultures. Justin Trudeau is of course the son of the late Canadian Prime Minister uh, Pierre Trudeau. He is speaking right now. He was asked if he'll resign. He did not answer the question. He has said that he did this before. This picture was not the first time. He acknowledges that at the time he did not think it was racist but now he knows that it was racist. Let's listen to him. Watch. How many times have you done something like this, Mr. Trudeau? Is that the only time in your life you've ever done something like that? Uh, when I was in high school, I uh, dressed up at a uh, talent show uh, and sang Dale. With 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 with, uh, with makeup on. Au secondaire, je me suis déguisé avec du maquillage et je chantais Dale. Why did you demand a question? 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 Why did you demand a question?
So clearly he's speaking French and English there, but the English part, he says, look, it's not the first time he did this. You heard him. He said he did it back in high school. He says he should have known better, but didn't, didn't think it was racist at the time, was asked a couple of times if he would consider resigning. Remember, he has just started his reelection campaign. He, he kicked it off back on September 11th. He has now sidestepped that question a couple of times, says it was wrong. It was a youthful mistake and clearly is looking for a little forgiveness in this matter. Tucker. You got it. As the Lord's Prayer suggests, you have to give forgiveness in order to receive it. Chris Gallagher, great to see you. Let's go back to that apology from the Canadian Prime Minister. I spoke just now to the host of the CBC program, Power and Politics, Vashi Kapelos. It's already not playing well. Uh, the Prime Minister, rather, the Lib party of the Liberal leader, I should say, we're in campaign mode here. Uh, he was trying very much so to apologize. He said he was, quote unquote, pissed at himself. He regretted it, deeply regretted it. He even called it racist. Uh, but this is, uh, th I, can't, I can't describe for you exactly how big of a moment this is in this campaign. Uh, it had been a quiet campaign until now. His party is neck and neck with the opposition. And, and this potentially could could really, really change things for him. So a lot of people are going to be hurt, offended, surprised, outraged. What is the political damage, do you think? The political damage is a, is a little bit more than that. Only, of course, on the face of it, it's, it's a completely offensive and awful thing to have done. However, this prime minister, this leader of the party, has, as prime minister, talked so much about diversity and really modeled himself, and I'm sure you've seen it on the international stage, as the embodiment of Canadian values and as the sort of anti-racist person, anti-racist candidate. He's criticized the opposition so much in the first week of this campaign for keeping candidates that had social media past that exposed either racist or homophobic views. In fact, he said that the leader of the opposition should not forgive them, that, he, he should, that those candidates should be booted. And so now when the tables are turned on him, it's the, it's the hypocrisy, really, of those comments that, are, that is going to be so politically damaging for him. And there was already a scandal, was there not, about the handling of a corruption case? There was a big scandal, and it actually really, it has faded quite a bit because it broke back in February. But at the time, and for a, a number of months, it personally hurt, once again, that same thing that I was talking about, his personal brand. His numbers went far, far down, and they stayed there for a while. And ironically, in the last three to four weeks, they had started to level off and pick back up, so much so that the, that the Liberals, his party, which had been down in the polls for a number of months, had bounced back up and were, as I said, neck and neck with their main opposition. This could once again, you know, turn the tables on him, given that it hits in the same, hits in the same vein. This, this man had really promised to do politics differently, to be different, to be a model, as I said, of Canadian values. And each of these issues really strike at that brand and, and hence could be really damaging to his political fortunes. And just briefly, Vasha, he's characterizing it as a massive error of judgment. I guess to some people it will look like a politician claiming to be one, th uh, pretending to be one thing, but actually another. Yeah, I think uh, exactly. And I think it's that sort of hypocrisy, right? Like right away, the opposition came out tonight and said it was still racist to dress up in brown face in 2001. He is the son of one of this country's most famous, uh, famous prime ministers. He had all the education in the world. He was a teacher at the time. It's hard to understand how he couldn't conceive that that would be racist, even though it was 18 or 19 years ago. Uh, and I think once again, it's that it's it, it's the hypocrisy that you're highlighting and and the uh, and and just the sort of damage of the visual of that picture uh, that that could prove to be potentially really damaging for him. Vashi Kapelos there of the CBC show Power and Politics. Let's quick. Back to our stop note, top story now. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau rushed to apologize for a photo that emerged showing him wearing brown face. In a scrum with reporters on his campaign plane tonight, he told Canadians he is sorry that he should have known better. But he has also said that it is not the only such incident in his past. As David Cochran explains, it's a hit to Trudeau's image at a crucial time. This is certainly not how Canadians are used to seeing a prime minister who likes to say that diversity is Canada's strength. Justin Trudeau in a turban and robe, dark makeup on his face, neck and hands. It's certainly not how Trudeau wants to be seen in an election campaign. I dressed up in an Aladdin costume and put makeup on. I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better, but I didn't, and I'm really sorry. 
Time magazine published the picture, which was taken at an Arabian Nights themed event at the Vancouver Private School where Trudeau taught in 2001. It forced Trudeau to hold an emergency news conference aboard his plane at the Halifax airport to try to explain himself. So is that the only time in your life you've ever done something like that? Uh, when I was in high school, I uh, dressed up at a uh, talent show uh, and sang Dale in, with, 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 uh, with makeup on. I'm going to be uh, asking Canadians to forgive me for what I did. I shouldn't have done that. I take responsibility for it. It was a dumb thing to do. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm pissed off at myself for having done it. I wish I hadn't done it, but I did it, and I apologize for it. Trudeau has made diversity a bedrock principle of his government, emphasizing it in his cabinet, where Canadians of diverse backgrounds hold major roles. During this campaign, the Liberals have repeatedly attacked the Conservatives for controversial social media posts, many of them racially insensitive. But now, this. It's been a core tactic of the Liberal campaign to this point to try to paint Andrew Scheer and his party as racially intolerant, and now it's the Liberals who are scrambling to contain a bombshell, as it's their leader who champions diversity and multiculturalism, who was photographed dressed in brownface, and he's done it more than once. David Cochran, CBC News, Halifax. Now, before the bombshell picture came out, Trudeau spent much of the day on the campaign trail making promises for seniors, while the NDP and Conservatives made promises to appeal to all ages. So which party is going to do enough to win over older voters? Kayla Hunsell has the story. These seniors were playing bridge while Justin Trudeau was making his seniors announcement. But they're engaged, some proudly displaying their colours. And they have opinions on Trudeau's promise to boost old age security and the Canada Pension Plan. I think that's really great for my generation, but, you know, there's a whole another generation coming behind us that have gotten so little. That's why Joanne Coffey says her number one priority this time around is not something traditionally seen as a senior's issue, the environment. I've voted Liberal before, I voted NDP, I voted um, the um, marxist leninist Party of Canada, but I'm going to vote Elizabeth May this time. Questions, partner? Lorraine Heffler is concerned about a national pharmacare program. <laughs> because there are many, many seniors who cannot afford their prescriptions. But she too says the environment is her priority. Because as far as I'm concerned, if that isn't dealt with, then nothing else is going to be, nothing else is going to matter. Ron Harnish agrees their generation has already been dealt a pretty good hand in life. It's time to focus on the future. One of my main concerns is that we can't seem to get candidates who are uh, prepared to act on behalf of the people. They always seem to be out for their best interests. He hasn't quite decided how he'll vote. He's narrowed it down to two choices and will be watching closely for the remainder of the campaign. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, Halifax.